Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. It's Christmas time here, and you can see I'm all decked out in my Amy Nolte gear, and I know that I promised you a tutorial for Please Come Home for Christmas. What this really is, is a tutorial about how to play this very simple 12-8 R&B groove. Also, I need to tell you that I came down with a cold yesterday, so I, I pretty much have the vocal range of, of a tenor at least, so check me out. Uh, oh, it's awful. I'm a man. So you, I need your best wishes for a speedy recovery. Sometimes I hesitate to make videos like this that come with a PDF and it's all written out for you so that it's just like super easy for you to pick up on and you don't have to do much thinking. I always, I like to, you know, teach a man to fish so that he can catch his own fish rather than catch the fish for him and, and then he's hungry later, right? So, but the reason I'll do it, I'll go ahead and do it on this one is because, like I said, it's a 12-8 R&B groove and you can use it in lots of places. So not just on Please Come Home for Christmas, you can use it in other places too. Sounds like this. <laughs> I mean, so theoretically it could be Earth Angel, Earth Angel, please be mine, right? Or it could be, you give your hand to me, and then you say hello. It could be a whole bunch of songs. So it's cool. You learned this one little trick and you're going to have it at your disposal to, to bust out on a lot of your favorite R&B hits. I want to show you how to do it now. Come on over. All right, the first thing is just an intro. You know, this isn't exactly like the Eagles did it, but it's, you know, I take a little artistic liberty here and there. So it's, it's pretty close, but I just wanted to make a simple intro. Kind of sounds like the bells, right? A little bit like if I were a bell. And then this is where the singer comes in right here. Bells will be ringing. That's how it starts. So you can see that the left hand just does this very simple doo wop kind of thing where you go one, six, five, six, five, three, one, six, five, six, five, three, and then the new one, six, five, six, five, three. It's, it's a pretty standard rhythm, and it's, it's pretty easy to just kind of pull off like that. The only thing I really want to say about it is that you have to pay attention to, uh, about where to accent. I'd say that these three, dun, 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 dun. yeah, you have to imagine that you're a bass player, you know. Uh, I can actually sing that note today. Doom. Oh my gosh. Doom, doom, right. Doom, 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 doom. It would be a separate attack on each of those, and they would sound like like you're like you're serious about getting to the home home again or the root again. Doom, 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 doom. Right. So you want to think about that when you're. I can't believe I can hit that note. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you have to think about that when you're playing piano. That that your left hand is representing uh, the upright bass player. You can even have a little separation. So even though I've only written the accents the first time, you can you can keep them up, you know, keep playing them like that. The right hand is, is just gonna be really simple 12-8, just playing these chords. So when we switch to B flat seven. The only one I'll really tell you to accent is is on beat two. So you've got one, two. I'd kind of accent that beat too. Um, the other thing that you can do, and you'll see me do it from time to time, is to hold on to the top note and keep these ones going. So you kind of have to kind of feel it out and play with that a little bit to see when you like to do that and when you don't want to do that. So you can, it's, it's the difference between this. And this. So you can hear this note, it just kind of rings all the way through. 
that again. Or, you know. But I, I tend to, you know, I just think of this as, it's kind of like, I mean, piano players have played this, right? You, you I found my thing. This, this kind of thing. A lot of times they do it up, up a little bit higher like that. Um, and that's cool too. I, I tend to keep it all right in the middle of the piano for right now because it kind of also reminds me of something that, that a guitar player could play. We're just imitating a band so that a singer can sing along or if you sing so that you can sing along. Um, but that's the, that's the main idea of this. The other thing I want to talk about is that most of the time you'll notice I've got four notes in my voicing. I, I also got a little bit lazy because I'm not using Sibelius, and I'm sorry for that. I had to do this pretty quick, um, hard to over the holiday season, um, especially being sick. But uh, so sometimes, you know, after the after the second bar, I decided I would just write out this one, and then I just wrote a whole bunch of E flats. But but it's it's this, you know, it's just because I got a little bit lazy. Um, but a really nice sound when you have a major chord is to add that sixth. So I didn't do it on the first one on the B flat six. I just play like that, but I called it a B flat six because the left hand plays the six. And then, but here when we get to the E flat chord, I do play a six chord. It's just kind of nice to have this dissonance in there. It's, I think it sounds nicer than just it just gives you a little more I don't know a little more jazz I guess um, and then and then there's another cool thing that I didn't write but I want to teach to you um, so I guess I'll I'll show it to you right here on this diminished chord and I, I actually wouldn't use it here in the fourth bar I'd wait so so we do have this um, we do have this first ending that we'll take so we have this Christmas whatever it says I can't remember Christ will be singing so we go back and we repeat silent night Christmas carols maybe this is a place to do this little trick I want to teach you by candlelight so instead of Instead of doing that the second time, and you can totally do that the second time, it's fine. But but another trick you can do is to use the diminished scale to, to fill a little bit with your left hand. Um, so, so here's an example of that. Oh, well, here's the diminished scale. So you have whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step. Could you see that okay? Here it is for the right hand. And, and you can use any of those notes to make a nice fill. Like that's one way, let's see, so I went You can walk yourself right up to um, the, the next chord, which is B flat, but you put an F on the bottom, maybe? That's, that's one way to do it. Another way you could do it is... Um, and, then, and then, again, you're, you end up right on an F, which, which I don't have written, but I think on the second page I, I do have written. Yeah, that, that third time that we play the diminished chord, it does resolve to a B flat 6 over F chord. So that one's cool too. You can you can start either place, but I, I do think a nice place to start uh, rhythmically is one two three one two three or one two three two two three right there on the two three. Bum 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 bum. I just think that's really solid. Okay, let's let's go on to the second ending. Sometimes I've written it so that your hand runs into each other, like. That's okay. Just, you know, handle it kind of like I did just there. So uh, kind of the idea is that you're playing one note, walking up to the next one when there's two chords in the bar, and then walking down to the next one. You just kind of always find a way to use that second or fourth beat to walk yourself down to your next chord. 
And there are many ways to do it. And you don't always have to walk down. Sometimes you can see me just playing with the octave. Like when I go from C minor to F7, um, back to B flat, I go. Just playing with the octave. Like that. You can come up with ways to take yourself to the next chord. I'm just kind of showing you some that, you know, in general tend to work. Um, let's go on to the bridge. Friends and relations. This is actually a place when I think it would be nice to hold down the E flat. Friends and relations. Smooths things out a little bit. And then, and then E minor six. And then here we're going to play uh, F7 with a sharp five, or, or you could call it F augmented. Right here, I've written it so that your left hand will run into your right hand too. Just keep up, keep up of that chord what you can keep up of it. So it's like, uh, see, I keep that up and then this one comes up. So I, you can just kind of hit it harder with your left hand so that, so that you can hear that contour happening and then we drop. Christmas man. Dear. It's time to be, be with the ones you love. And then here I've just written um, an arpeggio on an, uh, it's another F, F augmented arpeggio. So won't you, and then we go back to the beginning and it's just like it was. Never more on Christmas and New Year. Find you at home so we could try. There'll be no more sorrow. And then we're on the coda. No grief or pain. I like this part. We can we can hit this each of these really hard because we're coming around to the two to the two five that's gonna end the song. So I think it's a nice idea to just hammer out one, two, three, four. Pain. And then a little arpeggio, happy Christmas. Um, the melody notes are five, and I, I kind of wish that I could, could play the C sharp on that chord, but it would clash. Christmas. It kind of clashes. So if you're going to sing that melody note, um, which you probably are, don't, don't play the F, F7 with a sharp five right there. Just keep it simple. Once again. And then I just improvised a little line right here, um, just like a little New Orleans kind of line. One, two, three. And that's the way I get up to it. Um, you, can, you can either finger that with one, two, three, or you can do a, uh, let's see. Or I guess you can use your second finger to slide. Either way is okay, but if you slide, keep it clean. Keep it clean, kids. I, I like prefer that sound than a, I don't want any of, any of that. I, I like to keep my New Orleans licks kind of clean. Same thing here. Double it up with an octave at the top. A flat 13 chord, B flat 13 chord. You can shimmer shimmer till the dang cows come home if you want on that too. You can even give it a little button on the end. So I, sometimes I do that. Um, you could hit it at the top. You could you could gliss all the way down the piano. You could hit it. All kinds of options for you, everybody. Um, but that's about it. That's about how it goes. And uh, of course, the PDF is available for purchase for five dollars on my website. And just keep in mind that it's not going to be exactly like the original recording, but. It's, uh, and it might not even be exactly like my original recording, but it'll, it'll do the job. And I think, I think you'll have a good time playing it. Well, it's probably about time for me to go drink some more, uh, honey and lemon tea. Don't you think? Yeah, I think. But thanks for hanging out and for, uh, learning this song with me. Sorry, it's a little bit late. This is Christmas Eve, by the way, but Use it, like I said, not just to play this song, but to play all manner of R&B 12-8 grooves. And 
and you're gonna find yourself with such a great tool to help you make your way through lots of wonderful tunes. Thanks for watching Amy Nolte Music, and I'll see you next time.